Rosenfarb here. How are you today? So I wanted to drop in to have a conversation with you guys. Pretty uh, relevant conversation that has been coming up recently is that uh, I had a patient come in the other day and ask me about vision and the need for uh, returning for treatment. So that prompted a conversation that we had. Uh, that is the title of this, this session here that we're talking about, that healing your vision is not an event, it's a process, right? So healing vision is a process. It's not just an event. It's not just something that's gonna occur. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that, so they compared it to cataract surgery. So the patient comes in, they're like, you know, I went to get my cataracts out and uh, that was kind of like a one and done, or I go to my eye doctors and I get glasses or um, I get a mole removed or something like that. So why isn't the treatment process uh, like this, the same. Why, why, do, why do some people need to continue to come? Very, very good question. I figure it was worth um, coming live to talk to you guys about this. So the idea around this is that a lot of these conditions that we look at, specifically conditions like macular degeneration, conditions like retinitis pigmentosa, Usher's, Stargardt's, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, um, other forms of idiopathic optic nerve neuropathies, uh, eye strokes, uh, a lot of these conditions that, that we see, the retinal and optic nerve conditions and macular conditions, even like macular puckers and, and macular dystrophies and rod cone dystrophies. So these are all neurodegenerative conditions. That means the nerves are breaking down faster than they can build up, right? There's a lot of reasons that this happens. And if you've uh, followed my my educational seminars and videos on our YouTube page, or you've been hanging around in this group, you uh, will will get some clarity on that as to why these factors uh, contribute. That things like autoimmune processes, uh, vascular issues, ner the neurovascular system starts to break down. Uh, there are viruses and bacteria that can affect your vision. Things like ocular Lyme. Uh, we've had some patients have issues with COVID uh, in the way of getting eye strokes after after having COVID. Um, uh, again, vascular uh, chemical toxicity and uh, medications or injury, right? So there's a lot of these, these, these causes uh, or underlying factors that drive these eye conditions. And often they're systemic. It's not just an eye issue. So if it's an acute issue, like an injury, like an injury to your eye or something like that, yeah, uh, it's, it's a very shorter, relatively shorter period where there is maybe some damage or is an acute situation and we're trying to recover your vision. So the goal with that is we're trying to recover your vision as, as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible and as complete as possible. Uh, other conditions, like I mentioned earlier, which are more neurodegenerative, it means that there are these other factors going on inside your body that are accelerating the neurodegeneration. Again, specifically the degeneration of the optic nerve the retina, which consists of the rods and cone photoreceptors, and even to some extent the brain, right? Because the brain is what sees, the eyes are just the cameras that take the information in. So what that tells us is that there are these, these, these processes and factors going on that are, that are driving the progressive vision loss that need to be managed. So when patients come to our clinic, the first week or two that they're there, they will see improvements. Uh, subjectively, most patients start to report that they see bite, things are brighter, sharper, clearer, um, their visual fields open. If that's an issue, the reading is a little bit better. We see, start to see subjective improvement because we're getting more blood flow and oxygen and food and nutrients to the retinal cells. So they can actually breathe and, and take in nutrients and also detoxify, which is a big problem with a lot of these conditions. Um, as we continue treatment, these, these cells are starting to wake up. The cells that are dormant are starting to recover. So that's why people are, are gaining these improvements. What happens is that, that uh, acute, the treatment, what it does is it dilates the blood vessels, again, increasing oxygen, increasing food. But over time between treatments, uh, your lifestyle factors or the factors inside our body can cause those factors to kind of 
not go all the way back, but they're still there. For example, if you have an autoimmune process that's driving your eye condition, we can do everything to manage the oxidative stress, help reduce the uh, hyperactive immune system that could be attacking your retina or optic nerve or other parts of your eyes. So we wanna manage these, but it still requires tune-ups, right? So the first year of treatment, um, conventional neuroscience says on average, it's eight to 15 months to repair a sick or damaged nerve cell. So if the retinal cells, the, the rods or cones or the optic nerve is damaged, right? Then, or sick, you know, or, or, or damaged in some way, it's gonna take about a year to recover that. If brain's involved, it could take up to two years. Now, it's not, that's just the way it is. That's the way our bodies are wired. Um, so we need to, to appreciate that first, understand that it's not like if you cut yourself and it's just gonna take two or three weeks to heal that. Nerve cells will heal, but at a much slower rate. So we need to respect that and understand that first. Secondly, after we've recovered whatever we can after the first year, anyway, from six months to, to up to two years, if there's more brain involvement, then it's a process of maintenance, right? Maintenance is gonna be different for different people. And the reason, again, we, we go from this recovery phase where we're trying to get back as much vision as we can uh, during the initial phase of treatment with supplements, and we have you guys doing eye exercises, uh, sometimes meditation, with dietary recommendations, taking your supplements, using your alternating current stimulation at home, uh, managing stress, or any other factors that can be contributing to your progressive vision loss. So after we've recovered whatever we can, um, in terms of your vision during the first six months to two years, most of the time it's about a year, but some patients have gone up to two years. Then we shift over to maintenance and preservation and that requires maintenance. So just like you go to the dentist, just like you have to bring your car in regularly to get your brakes checked, to get your tires checked, to get your oil changed, um, to look at the engine, to make sure everything's functioning the way it is, uh, that's required. So because of the nature of these neurodegenerative conditions that often involve the immune system and the, the vascular, the blood vessels, the degeneration of blood vessels, um, perhaps even uh, respiratory issues where the oxygen isn't coming in uh, or detox pathways like the liver isn't working well. So there are all these are hormonal imbalances that are impacting it. All these other factors need to be managed. And if we leave them alone, uh, they can start to go back into a dysfunctional state. So we need tune-ups periodically. Different people have different uh, requirements for tune-ups. I have patients who come, say, every two months for maintenance. I got patients who come for every two years for maintenance. And what that has to do with is the stability of their, of their vision. And you guys know that. If you or someone you love is dealing with a vision loss, you know you have good days, bad days, and maybe after a period of time, things will start to destabilize and the vision may uh, be perceivably worse. Or maybe you're not so aware of it and you go back to your eye doctor and like, yeah, you know, your visual field decreased or you're not reading as well. So those are indications based on the metrics or the test results that are showing that objectively there has been some progressive degeneration. Uh, you may notice that subjectively as well, meaning that you might be, be aware of that. So again, the idea here is that that it's, it's a process. We're not like coming to our, patients will come to our office and it's like a one and done. Um, if it's traumatic injury, it could be. But again, for the neurodegenerative processes, it's a process. It takes time to help recover your vision. And then there's a process to help you keep what you got. That's really what we're about. Uh, you know, we always, I always say your vision is our mission. And that's true. And specifically what we mean by that, or I mean by that, is that we want to try to help you recover your vision to the maximum capacity that we can and then help you keep what you got. So in order to do that, uh, maintenance is required. It means that something has to be done. And the more you do at home, the less you'll need somebody like me uh, in terms of frequency of integration to help recover. Like if you're eating well and you're exercising and you're managing your stress and you're meditating and you're taking your supplements and you're using uh, transocular stimulation, alternating current stimulation at home, and you're, um, you know, you're managing your, your whole body and you're, you're, you're doing a good job uh, taking care of yourself, then 
you know, you don't need me or other healthcare practitioners as much. If you're not on top of that as much and your vision is wavering, you may need more help. So I wanted to drop in and explain that a little bit uh, to you guys because it's not so clear. People, again, kind of get really locked into this conventional biomedical mindset where all I have to do is take a pill or do a surgery or it should be one and done. Um, it's just not the case with chronic degenerative conditions. And I wish it were like, I wish there was like, again, like a stem cell or a gene therapy or something like that, that came out or anything that would just kind of fix it. So it wouldn't have to, you know, wouldn't have to do anything else. It was just done. Unfortunately, that's not where we're at, but fortunately for a lot of you guys, there is nothing else available. So while we're waiting for biotechnology and other in, in, uh, science, to come up with, with better treatments or even treatments for conditions where there's nothing available. In the meantime, this is the best we have. The best we have is to help you maintain your vision and maintain your vision again through taking care of yourself uh, with all these home therapies and also coming to our clinic periodically to receive acupuncture, hyperbaric oxygen treatment, laser acupuncture, um, electroacupuncture, uh, transocular stimulation, alternating current stimulation, and all the therapies that, that we, we do recommend here. Um, it's also very important for those of you guys who are uh, going to other practitioners possibly to get vision, uh, to get your eyes worked on. It's very, very important. The last thing I want to say is make sure that before you start, you're getting your vision tested. If it's not by the practitioner you're working with, by your eye doctor, because you need a comparative. You have to know where you're at where your starting point is, is a baseline. And then when you go through a series of say 10 or 20 treatments, you have to retest to make sure you're responding. If you're not, it often means that the practitioner, um, sometimes it's the patient, but usually it's a practitioner that doesn't have experience uh, with your specific case, or they need to change up the, uh, the, the treatment protocol, which is pretty much why I do, one of the reasons anyway, why I do vision testing. A, because we want to see a measurable result, and if in some cases a patient is not responding the way I want them to respond, or I think they should be responding, then I need to course correct and change the course of treatment to make sure that we're getting the results that we need to get. So I hope that was useful for you uh, information. We're going to be doing a lot more of these mini sessions, trying to keep it to about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, please, please, please post in our group if you have any questions or is anything that you want to learn more about. If you have questions about this session that we did, feel free to reach out to me or you can post your questions in the comments section. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email or DM me or reach out to my staff here at the office here in Westfield. Um, again, the office here is 908-928-0060. Our website is acuvisionacupuncture.com. We also have iHealthInstitute at iHealthInstitute.com. That's where we sell our uh, YouTube, uh, excuse me, our iQigong videos. That's where we have our supplements and that's where we have our alternating current stimulation, um, uh, our alternating current stimulation home units for, for purchase. So, Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.